next up, we will have a speaker that will be giving a, an API talk, but he promised this one will be different. So let's welcome to the stage, Mateus Nocek. <laughs> Hello again, thank you. How do you feel? Great. Uh, okay, so I will introduce myself again. My name is Mateusz Najek. I'm a quality assurance engineer and uh, open source enthusiast, of course. And today I'm going to tell you about the new tool I've been working on last month. Uh, as you can see from the title, it's from about the API, but it's going to be different. And why? Because it relates to a specific approach for testing API, which some may call contract testing. So nowadays, API becomes more and more popular. There are APIs nearly everywhere, and we know that if there is software, there need to be tests as well. And I've been writing tests for API uh, tests for several years now, and I saw many different things, and I know what does it mean to do it wrong. So the API testing should not rely just on the responses from the server. It should not check only the cases uh, where we expect to get 200 response code. And it should not validate only the fields we feel are important. And it definitely should not ignore schema, which is uh, metadata that defines how the data is structured. So I know one tool, at least, that does it great, and it's called RoboSwag. It's the one that uh, Pekka mentioned as one of the ecosystem projects. The tool uses open API specification files to generate ready-to-use Python libraries, which can be utilized with both Python and Robot Framework code. It checks all possible responses from the server, not only to hundreds. And RoboSwag also validates both payload, which is input, and the response, which is output, and it checks against the schema. So it's possible to overwrite also body and query parameters of the request, and it's just fun and easy to use. So how does it work? So first, you need to have the open API specification file, of course, of your API. Then you run RoboSwag, which reads this file and generates Python libraries out of it. And that contain most of the information that is needed to write the tests. So now you just need to use those libraries to write tests. That's it. But let's take a look at it in action, of course. Let me just switch the screen share to this one. OK. So here we have a Swagger open API specification file. It's quite long. It's uh, thousands of lines. And it describes your API. So you have all the endpoints here, how the response should look like, how the request you provide should look like, and so on. So we are going to use this file and generate Python libraries. And then we, we are going to use those lab libraries to run to write tests. So Let's just call RoboSwag with uh, minus s and the path to a Swagger file. And you can see that it generated many files. When I click here and see that the, that the directory refreshed, you can see a new directory here. It's Swagger Pet Store. The name comes from the title from the, from the open, I, open API specification file. And Inside this directory, you have three other directories. The first one is endpoints, which of course describes the endpoints, and it it's has all the endpoints that you can send a request, all the parameters that you can provide to it. Then you have models, which is a Python representation of objects that are used within your API. And then you have schemas, of course, which is this metadata, which we can then validate our code against the schema if we provide the correct information. So I'm going now to go to a placeholder file that I created. Um, and I'm going to fill in those tests and see how, how they can use this uh, generated libraries from, from RoboSwag. 
So the, here we have an imp import of library, and you can see it's not importing RoboSwagger because, because Swagger only generates the libraries. It imports actually the endpoints that we are going to use. So we have Swagger Pet Store, then we have endpoints, and then we have Pet, right? So, and then the next parameter that we provide is actually the, the URL of the server that we are going to hit with our request and see what are the responses and check them against our libraries. So, so and this is uh, some standalone open, open source free, uh, free um, API on the internet. So let's keep fingers crossed that it will not break. Okay, so um, yeah, let's, okay, let's take a look at the, at the file that, that were created. So here I'm, I'm going to check to validate, or sorry, to get valid pet successfully. So of course we expect 200 here, and we are just going to use this get pet by it method. So let's try. And we are going to provide pet id, let's say two, okay. Let's run robo robot with trace log level, we direct the out output and and the path to our file. And then let's take a look at the log. OK, so the other five uh, tests are skipped. And the first passed, we can see that it responded with 200. And we actually wanted to we were, we were expecting 200 because it's by default. But what about getting pet that doesn't exist? Let's take one, two, three. And then we are going to expect 404 because it doesn't exist, right? So let's run the tests again. Check the logs. And you can see that it returned 404, and we were expecting 404. So that's it. But what about this one? We again want to receive a pet, but we, we are going to provide an invalid ID. So let's take a look at the schema here. And you can see that, uh, well, not this get pet. Oh, no, we are in the pet schema. Okay, so you can see that the ID here is integer, right? It's expecting integer. And I'm going to provide character A. And it should probably be a bad request, so 400. Let's run the test again. And it failed. And is it good or bad? Let's see. So we have 400 in the response. That's, well, that's what we were expecting. So like, as we look at this test, it looks right. So why does it fail? Well, because we were expecting invalid ID supplied in the body of the response. And the actual response has this strange message. So you can see here, when we go to get paid by the ID, this Python library that was generated, you can see that in the 400 response, we want to have this expected text. And it's not there. So what, what does it mean? What's the conclusion? The conclusion is that we were checking the, if the server responds uh, the same as we expect from the open API specification file. And it's not. So we have a bug, right? It's either in the open API specification file or on the server, but it's a bug. So thanks to these libraries that were generated through from the specification file, we can see that the server doesn't respond as we expect. And uh, I see I'm not, I don't have enough time to show you the, the, uh, the next examples, 
but uh, I will maybe upload them and you, you can take a look after, after the presentation. So let me just go back to the presentation. Okay, so the tool is still in the alpha version, so it's not working flawlessly, and there's space for a lot, in, a lot of improvements, some ideas on how, to can, how it can be improved. It needs the support for Swagger v3 and both for JSON and YAML format. The common line interface is simple, not very powerful. It's like fire and forget right now. And there are many authorization methods that need to be added, as well as the documentation needs some improvement and, of course, more tests. So my final thought is that I wish I had such tool four years ago when I was ri writing a lot of API tests. And please keep in mind that it's still in our alpha version, but we're open source. So feel free to join us and let's do it together and give us a star to improve the visi visibility. So at the bottom, you have a link to our tool. It's in the market square under the name RoboSwag. And just give us a star and help us improve it. Thanks for listening, and have a great Obacon. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, one quick question uh, from the audience. What version of Open API specification is supported? Uh, I, I think it's uh, version 2 right now, but definitely it's, it needs to support both, version 2 and 3. So it's on the roadmap. Excellent, excellent. Thank you once more, Matthias.